Chicken Whoa. burger disco in the freaking oh. house. You know what I didn't do? What didn't you do? I was going to, uh, I was going to do this. Oh. Even though, even though you mentioned like, you know, like nobody will see it because I was still going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> just up here and I have the dumb mask on. You'd be like, no way. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I totally blew it. I wasn't thinking about that at all. Hey, I'll just, how about this? I'll pretend. Maybe I'll cut in a little portion where it's like, okay, come on, man. Take off the mask. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, I have so many questions about chicken burger disco. I have so many questions about what it actually is that like, I, you do these dimension connecting things that I'm so intrigued by. I gotta be like, I, cool, I watch cool. them constantly. Oh wow! Oh, that—that's really nice to to hear. Yeah, yeah. let's well, talk about it. Like, where's that yeah. coming from? Okay, um, it might go along with sort of your questions, right? So, love it. Um, origins. I have. I am part of a, a music art group called the Fantastic Plastics. Uh, we've been a band for a long, long time. The idea basically is uh, there's a lot of visual elements to it. At some point, I decided I didn't want to perform anymore. I'm a bad performer, but I could do a lot of other things. So visuals, background things, stuff like that. So for a long time, our band, I would work on music or visuals for them. They would go on tour and put up like a projection screen with like weird crap. So that's actually where dimension connecting comes from. The whole idea is that we're from another dimension. We're sort of intruding on this world with our weirdness. So that's the idea. I love um, that. When... It was before COVID. They decided, I say they as the Fantastic Plastics, my, my buddy Tyson and his wife Miranda. They went, hey, let's do Twitch streaming. So when we're not touring, we can play every week. And so then, okay, cool. We got the install, the video install. We'll perform in front of the install. But you got to go to the bathroom because if you're playing on Twitch, you're not doing 20 minute sets like you would yeah. normally do in a bar, right? You got to get off and, or adjust your hair or just set up stuff. So we went, well, let's start doing like cut scenes. So they have something to throw to. So I would start making some weird nonsense. And that's basically where the toy ad came from. The first one. So I collect toys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, we're going to talk about that for sure. That's a giant <laughs> shelf. Yeah. Um, and so I, uh, I thought, how can I integrate the, the idea of the cutscene to give them some time? Also spoof on them, make a joke. Uh, on them and then integrate it with my own thing. So I just skip bash some stuff together came up with figures of my buddies and then sent over, <laughs> I was sending over like a new, I give them like four or five clips at a time. Usually here's, here's a few clips. They'll use them for a few weeks. They'll go to the next set of clips, then start recycling. So I sent them four or five new clips. That's my cat. And uh, sent them four or five new clips. And uh, one of them was the toy ad and they lost it. They went, dude, what is this? It's hilarious. So I said, uh, yeah, um, it's pretty fun. Show it if you want or not. I just, I had to do it. It was so funny. So they showed it once and like, you know, people like, and I went, crap, I'm gonna have to make more. So I start working on more. As I start working on more, I'm looking for things to kit bash things to see because I was a collector, uh, customizing and kit bashing is all part of that. Right. Yeah. I don't have the right Iron Man. I need Iron Man with this or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that was all part of it. I didn't know anything about toy bootleg, nothing. So I'm looking for the right head uh, for some characters that I'm trying to create to continue these jokes with these guys uh, for our Twitch show. It's their Twitch show. I just help out with the video and stuff. Um, so I'm trying to uh, find stuff. That's when I discovered toy bootlegging. So I'm looking for like a skull head. It's a three and three quarter inch sky scale head. And I was on Super 7's website because that's a good place to find that type stuff. Yeah. And... Uh, and that's when I stumbled upon what's Phantom Star Killer. This isn't a brand, so I'm like researching that. What's what's this? And the end of they have that worst. It's like a category of like things that aren't part of contemporary brands. Yeah, right? it's yeah. not a monster. Or it's not whatever. Just these weird things. And they had this dude that was like a brain in a in a in a vase. And I'm like, oh my god, that's awesome. They don't have it in stock. I want that. So this leads me down the whole idea of. of well, what is Phantom Star Killer? Because that's I'm not stealing from that, but that is really great, and I kind of want one now because I don't even know what this is. So I start looking it up, and I'm like, toy bootlegging, and of course you see what you see. Suck Lord's there; <laughs> he's got it completely iced. Yeah, he, everybody, he, everybody from the from the beginning, they usually find him almost immediately. Yeah. So, 
yeah, so I see this and I'm like, what's this? And you know, like they made a documentary, right? There's like a 30 minute documentary master casters. Yep. I'm like, Oh, what's, well, so I watch it the first time. And I'm like, I don't understand it. Like I get it. I, I, I don't understand it. So I watch it again yep. and again, and you start like picking up names. So I start Instagramming every name. And at that point in time, I wasn't really even on Instagram. I was just sort of starting that. And I just was starting to, to, to learn and to stretch out. And meanwhile, I'm doing my stuff with my friends, right? So we're doing our Twitch show and I'm making the weird cut scenes and I'm doing fake ads and uh, their viewers or, or their, their fans that show up and listen to and play music on Friday. They play when, usually Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Wednesday's a talk show now. Uh, so we have all this weird stuff going on. So those folks kind of get used to it. Meanwhile, I'm over here discovering. Going like COVID happens, can't yeah. leave the house. So it's just eBay, like crazy. And so that's when I started learning about everything. Um, long story short, uh, I got that head that I wanted, which was actually from a Marvel legend. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah. uh, uh, it was like an extra piece they gave me. But I wanted to make more than one. And I've seen all this stuff on toy bootlegging. And I thought, I should probably cast something. Let's figure that out. So anyway, so I went off on a tangent, casting. And just all this stuff together, I'm obsessive. And just turned me into like a weirdo. So I don't, I don't know if that makes It's a long story to explain. I just sort of got here from the craziest angle. But it's Yeah, funny. I love that. Well, it's we the all, greatest thing ever. Is my yeah. Opinion, so. And we all start out with that idea of like, I can do that. It's a, that little thing is like, oh, I, I see that guy doing that. I can do that. And then we just learn I'm like, quickly. I'm like, I can't ever do that. But man, I can make something crappy that hey. like, will show on film. My trick is always, if I can get it across on, on, on a little video that people are watching on their phone or wherever, yeah. it's good, good enough. When I've tried to make stuff for people, that's where all the stress comes in and the nerves come in. Because I'm like, they're going to buy this now? Fuck, I better I better try to make this as good as possible. <laughs> yeah, I, I think for me it can suck. You know? Yeah, and there's people like so. Uh, there's people that like definitely live into that. Oh, I'm gonna make junk. You're gonna buy junk. That's just what. Right. I'm, yeah, and that's like I, I always come back to the suck lord where he sells that box of trash. Yes. Like people do unboxings, it'll it is literal trash. Stop doing unboxing videos for that, please. <laughs> But, uh, you know, I like I, I get so bummed out when people uh, think about the idea that, oh, it's a bootleg. So it's supposed to look trashy. No, like make it look good. Yeah. So you yeah, did- I wish I wish my stuff looked great. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting better. That's yeah. all I can say is like I'm trying and trying and trying to get better uh, so that my molds are better. It's cold here. So like I can't really use a pressure pot until it warms. And then yeah. So I'm about uh, a few weeks away from being able to just go crazy, but. So, well, how, so I guess I have a couple questions. So how long have you been doing uh, bootlegging? And then when was the start of Chicken Burger Disco? And, you know, let's just throw this in there. Where did that name come from? Okay. Well, I can hit the name easy. So yeah. I make, uh, so I have two daughters and I joke with them about what's for dinner. Dad, what's for dinner? So chicken burgers. No, dad, really what's for dinner? Chicken Burger Disco. And so when I was trying to come up with a name for something to call myself a while back, uh, my wife's like, you should just do it. Make it be a joke based on what you and the kids do. Don't make it because I'm trying to do, you know, like photon laser, you know, like that's what I'm trying to come up with is the worst name that's not good, you know, and uh, it's sort of just like. I think maybe it was the podcast. I listened to your, your podcast, but it was the only one that you had up on iTunes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Last night. Maybe it was that one or it was something else uh, that I'd seen you do where somebody said, just lean into the, lean into whatever is you, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And so that joke of just this, me and the girls, that's why I went, all right, I'm going to go with that. And the, so once I did that, I had to get a mask, right? Mm-hmm. You got to have a mask. You got to come with something, Daft Punk or uh, things like that were like, they're sort of behind a shroud, sort mm-hmm. of a mystery about who the creator is. Something about that works. And so I'm not very good at it. I'm always taking the mask off. <laughs> but uh, like, there's something about that that I thought, you know what I can do? It creates an icon really fast. My face, not so good, you know, but it creates an icon. Here's a chicken headed dude. What is that about? Why is he doing that? And and honestly, the, the character and everything comes from the fact that everything for me is a remix or a mashup. 
right? Yeah. You're, you're taking a bunch of parts and you're rearranging them. And I can't start from zero and create something original. I really can't. I'd like to be able to sculpt something or, or make a song that doesn't have its foundations in a little piece of something else, but I'm not able to. So when you're doing that, you have to remember, you have to have an ethos about how you go about it. And my ethos is very much that, like, I'm, I'm remixing something. There's a comedian somewhere said, uh, to be funny, you have to feel funny, right? So you put like a, something in your shoes, so you're off balance or something. So it gives you the perspective to be humorous. Yeah. So for me, it's the same thing. So if I'm, if I'm operating as chicken burger disco, then it opens up so that I can be this thing that's unnatural. Yeah. And so it's weird or off kilter or makes my wife go, ew. And I'm like, yes, that's, that's where I want to be because that's yeah. the... Because if it's just me at work, right, just normal work, oh, man, I'm boring. You know, I just am horrible. So it's just, it's almost like embodying the aspirational weird. And you have done something that I have never seen done before. And I, like, take a couple seconds to, like, just praise it. You have this whole, like, character dynamic when you put the mask on. And Mm. then you created a toy (laughs) about the persona. (laughs) And the, it's so amazing because like you're not only do you have branding, but then you made a toy for your branding. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. So stupid. And I well, love it. Oh, oh, thank you. Yeah. It's just, it's just, it's, it is exactly that. The whole concept is, or that idea being a chicken burger disco would make an action figure of himself. Me? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's like embodying that again, like, what what and then sticking my i'm always sticking myself in like so as i'm making like shorts and skits and stuff with my friends i i told my wife i said i'm, I'm making these things and i realized halfway through it's a fantastic plastics it's a fantastic plastics my buddy tyson and miranda are in there and i go you realize that i've made myself the hero and i never tried i wasn't trying to go like you know what's <laughs> you know what i should do i should take the two main characters and just sideline them yeah and make me be the guy who's important but somehow I did that. And then, I don't know, it's just all stupid. And, uh, and that, to be honest, I just like, it brings me so much joy to just go around and be like, all right, here's how we chicken burger discoize this. You yeah. Know, and, and twist it and make it that little bit of something. So, so thank you. No, it's, it's great. It's dumb and silly. Well, I think that's the part that uh, it's, it's tough. Like when you look at the greats, they have a weird persona about them. Mm-hmm. And you are in line with the like we have. Oh, well, you <laughs> so have like Suck Lord who has this like uh, I don't remember. It, is it called uh, Gay Trooper or whatever? He dresses up like it all the time. And right, right. Uh, well, so in his videos, because I've watched some of his videos, or yeah. actually I watched them. All. Let me. I'm not going to lie here. I watched everything the guy's made. Yeah. Uh, he plays Vectar in his like uh, Toilers of Chinatown. So he has this series that he did. So he plays sort of a downtrodden character, but he's also the suck Lord. Yeah. Which I'd love to ask him questions about that because I'm fascinated because when he cast himself in his own role, he cast himself as a different character and he plays a different character. Huh. And so you're like, so he's the villain, he's the super villain, but he's also something else. And so yeah. I, love, I love that, you know, and I don't know what that is, but anyway, but uh, yeah, it's not intentional. I just, it, it's all just like, to, again, to be funny, I got to feel funny. So if I put the mask on, it, it, it's like this. So I had the, this uh, segment uh, that's like a weird musical segment. Uh, and, it, and to do it, I put on like a weird Hawaiian shirt and some socks and stuff like that. And so my wife and kids are out shopping, grocery store. They come home. I'm in the basement <laughs> in this in, in stupidest outfit you ever saw. But with the mask off, because I'm working on some tech part of it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, Oh, well, I was feeling something a second ago. See, <laughs> at that moment, I don't feel like the goof, right? Yeah. As, soon as, the, as soon as the mask goes on, I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. Now we're now we're a thing. You know, it's like it's, I don't know, so. Well, I think it's cool. Like, uh, I, I look at Dollar Slice Bootleg as well. Whenever he, like, he, I, he's reviewed some of my toys. He does those toy reviews. I saw. Yeah, and he From puts DKE the- last year, I saw. Because you had yeah. that freaking rad, huge thing. Yeah. That was amazing. So that one was what's tough. Like I had to design. So, I mean, I love Photoshop, right? And Mm. so it was like 12 by 18 inches. So you're designing on a different scale when you're on Photoshop. And then I had it printed on aluminum, aluminum carbide. 
this right. like weird metal thing because I wanted to make it weatherproof because <laughs> the original goal was I was going to put it all together and then hang it somewhere in San Diego, California. Oh, that's cool. And then just say like, hey, go get it. And so that's the next goal. I have one more piece and I'm going to travel somewhere and just leave it on a wall somewhere. That's re- that's such a cool idea. Yeah, just like, so people get art. Treasure hunt, find yep. it. Yeah, yep. that's dope. And so, uh, but when he did it, he had that mask on. Mm-hmm. And I thought like, oh yeah, that's fun. It's it's DKE, maybe he's having fun. And then he posted a video of him walking through Target in that mask. <laughs> and it was like, uh, like either you are so crazy or you have this crazy character that you're like living into. And I love it. I, I want right, more right. of it. I want more of that world. Yes. Well, and, and I don't know the answer for, in, for him, but uh, I, I like it too. Yeah. You know what I mean, and you so, guys, like all three of you, like I'm putting, which is yeah, great. Like, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> you guys are the three that I've seen do it, but you, you have this branding that you're living. And it is, mm. I could say from uh, an outside perspective, like my logo is a rubber duck and it says mm-hmm. Yucko Toys. I, I mean, I would get, I should get creative with it, but that's just, I haven't we yet. We need a duck mask, man. Exactly. I need a duck mask. I need to get a rubber duck floating in a lake, something. Exactly. But uh, you guys are living it and have videos of it. And so you guys are like rebranding and showing us all how to brand yourself so well. So it's, it's incredible. Not, it's total by the seat of my pants. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> that's, I think that's what makes it bootleg. And that's what makes it amazing. Yeah. Totally going like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, here's how I would do things. Yeah. Right? And, and it's, I'm sure it's the same for you when you're making something. There's, it, here's how I would do it. You see somebody else and you're like, Damn, I'm jealous. That's so good. Yeah. It, but at some point you got to go, eh, that's what I can do. Yeah. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And somebody said this somewhere and I don't know who it was, maybe Adam Horowitz or somebody uh, smart. It basically, they said, comparing yourself to other bug, everybody else just kills all the joy in it. Mm-hmm. Don't do it. Just see that respect it and go, man, I, I'm going to aspire, but don't, don't, you know, let that impact you or whatever. And so that's good. I struggle with it yeah. because, you know, I see stuff and I go, man, that's a good idea. You know what I mean? And you're like, I wish I'd, ah. well, now I can't do it. Can I do something else that's inspired by, you know, and so you need to riff on that. So, and it's hard to not, I think this is because it's such a small niche, like mm-hmm. hobby slash art form there's not that many of us. And like, if you get on Instagram, you see all these profiles of people making it. And then you, you see like they haven't posted for a year or something Mm. It's like, man, maybe you're not a part of it, but there's only like a core group of like a hundred, 200 people that are making this happen. And so in a group of 200, you are for sure going to look at other people and be like, Oh, I want to do that. Like I'm jealous of that. My, my, one of my goals right now is to yeah. not be the guy who stops posting for a year and disappears. Cause yeah. my fear is cause you know, like anything, like you get really into it, you love it. And then you can fall out of love with it. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, I don't know why, but I was paying a lot less attention to the NFL this year. Right. I like football, but yeah. I wasn't paying so much attention to the NFL. And, and so it's not that I, I, it's like it. I just eh, actually, to be honest, I was more busy working with my pressure pot or trying to figure out toys. Yeah. Than, than the game and the bear stunk. Uh, so I was kind of like, uh, but um, that's one of the things I have in the back of my head is don't fry yourself out. Pace. Everything's one step at a time. Yeah. And, and if I go too hard, too crazy, I just won't make it. And I actually think I saw Dollar Slice talking something about that. And one of the things where he was, you know, posting on Instagram or something like that about guys who come in really hard, really fast and then burn out and just go away. Mm -hmm. Like that's the last thing I want to do. Number one, I'm not really here to make any money. I'm really here just to have a great time. So that if I remember that ethos, I think I can stay. Yeah. Yeah. And then number two, don't go. I have so many ideas and I'm so hyper that as you probably can tell already. (laughs) Um, I'm so hyper. I'm afraid that I will just, completely blow out of all the ideas and just be like, ah, I'm done with this. What now, what do I do? What do I customize trucks? You know what I mean? So I'm trying, that's a goal of mine to not do that. And dollar slice. He, he presents this cool model where like, I don't know if you've noticed. So he doesn't put out a figure every week or he doesn't put out a figure. Sometimes it's not even for like once a month. He has been working on 
Oh uh, man, I always forget it. It's like Professor Waffles or Yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's he's been working amazing. on it for a while. Yeah. And it hasn't if I remember right, it hasn't released yet, right? To, to my knowledge, no, because I want one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he's I mean been, if it came out, I'm bummed. <laughs> yeah. So he's been working on that for so long and just has this like almost like this aura about him that's like, no, I'm gonna release when I release and that's it. Like that's what matters. Right. Well, he's got gravitas too. He can say that. Yeah. Right? He can go like, I'll do my thing and you guys will know about it. Yeah. Meantime, I'm working and refining. When you're starting something, it almost becomes like a mount. Yep. I can produce, I can produce, I can produce, I can produce. And, th- and then that's what, you know, can garner the sales or whatever you're trying, you yeah. know, notoriety or whatever. So. And then uh, his wife or girlfriend, uh, Horsey Boo, just put out mm-hmm. uh, Mr. Tusk. Which is amazing. I did you watch all the videos of how they put it together and stuff? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, incredible. In I don't incredible. remember what they were charging for those, but they should have doubled it. Two hundred bucks. Yeah, because and they <laughs> sold out. The labor is crazy. Yeah. yeah, and they sold out. If I remember right, it was something like ten minutes or something small, like all immediately gone. And I don't know if you've ever messaged with him. Uh, a little bit. Yeah, so he'll reply yeah. and do whatever. Yeah, so he's I, nice. Yeah, I sent him a message and uh, I was like, hey. I saw you did a video of how you poured uh, Mr. Tusk. Like, are you doing math or like, how are you doing that? And he was like, no, I'm, I'm not a fucking mathematician. I just, <laughs> I just, I make a bunch, I pour and then whatever's left, I pour in other molds and keep. Right. And good, that's how I do it. Then I yeah. feel better. <laughs> and, and so it's so good to hear. I don't know about you, but for me, it's like, man, it's so good to hear that I'm in that camp. Like, I, yeah, I'm not going to do math. This isn't my, I'm not right. a mathematician, but I will make a dope toy for you. Right. Yeah. So that's my, but okay. So we, I see you whenever there's a live or like, uh, I'll see you pop up and then people will reference you and they'll say like, oh, what's up chicken burger disco. But I have never encountered you mm. until now. So I'm super, right. and then I went through and saw the video for uh Magoob, which can we talk about that for a second? Sure. That looked incredible it looked like a toys r us commercial it looked yeah so what it's not me man he took great photos that's what that was yeah (laughs) so let's talk about like what your reasoning behind that was what you were thinking like all that what what made you so yeah well so i that's one of a bunch i don't remember how many so um what happened is uh we last dk econ uh the one that was in november whenever it was not too long ago um so that was the first time I was, what had happened is I was bugging Dove. Dove, can I, can I, can I, when you guys go to the restroom, can I play my stuff? Basically, that's what I was okay. saying. You guys eat lunch, play my videos. He saw him. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, go over there and, and do this, do that to the other. And then Janky Toys went, I think we can find a spot for him. So here, let's put 10 minutes in. If you make me 10 minutes for three days, I'll put you in. And I'm like, oh shit, that's a huge opportunity. Yeah, 10 minutes is huge. And it's too much. Like yeah. to say, here's 30 minutes, man. Okay. At the time, I think I might've had like four or five minutes that I thought could work for toys. Right. Yeah. Cause I got all kinds of other weird stuff, but it doesn't necessarily fit. So long story short, where I'm going with this is at that show, Magoo was on for almost every single day. Okay. And, uh, I had his space warps came out. I think he would hit Boba Fett and I'd already seen the first wave of space warps. Yeah. And, and right after, I mean, and so he's chatting with people in there and he's funny, right? And he's very uh, clever and, and just super nice. And so right after DKE was over, I messaged him, DM'd him on Instagram and said, hey, can I make a, can I make a commercial for your stuff? We can do space warps. Here's like, here's an idea. And I just threw him an idea. And I went, here's an idea for this. And he's like, dude, that's hilarious. Uh, what do you need? And I said, well, I didn't get in on the first wave because it was earlier released. Yeah. I had the Boba Fett. So I can make the Boba Fett. And he's like, no, 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 I'll send you these artist proofs that I have laying around. He's like, they're loose, though. I'm like, oh, that's perfect. Good so I'm going to have to open them, right? So he sends me the artist proofs. So I'm, I'm goofing around with them. I make like a couple little segments. And he says, hey, uh, you know, he likes them, right? So I make a couple things. And he goes, dude, these are awesome. These are great. And I'm like, yeah, use them however you want. And uh, But I'm, I want to show him a DKE in March. Is that okay? And he's like, yeah, yeah, that's great. And then he says, here's a sneak peek of what I'm doing next. So he showed me what he's doing next. I go, okay. Um, I got another idea. And so then I told him that idea is like, okay. 
And so what happens between those things, we just start chatting back and forth. Yeah. He's like, I got this idea. Actually, he had a couple really good ideas that I never get to use yet. So maybe later, uh, let's we go back and forth. So I would just keep making stuff. So when he did the play set, uh, first off, he starts like hinting at what's coming with the play set, right? Here's this play set I'm making. And it's just showing like corners and stuff. And I'm like, what is that? He's like, dude, I made a play set. I, I needed this whole thing. I'm like, oh my God. It's rad, as soon man. as you finish that thing, send me pictures of it. Because I think I got an idea. So he gets it done. And I mean, he's just finishing them, right? They're just finished up. Uh, so there's no time to send me like a sample or something like that to use. And I'm like, film yourself in front of it and send me some stuff. And he's like, oh, actually, I got an idea. So we go back and forth with a bunch of this. He sends me some stuff and I go, oh, but those pictures, you didn't send me the pictures. Send me, the, send me those professional pictures or however he took those pictures. They're great. Send those to me. And he's like, okay, uh, all right. So he sends them to me. And that's where that first ad that he released came from. Uh, because I thought I can do the slickest, most corporate crap for that. I've never done anything that looked like that ever before. And it worked so well. And it's his pictures. They're yeah. gorgeous. Like that needs to be in a book. Is that your that's voice? Crazy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I yeah. usually pitch it up or slow it down, but yeah, yeah. that's what it I was, typically do. Yeah, that, and I feel like that's such a good way to describe it. It is corporate. 101, that is yep. corporate. And I loved it. So like I, uh, cause I make weird music and stuff, right? So yeah. I'm working on the pictures and I'm doing like, all right, sound effects and pull-ins. What I basically do is I have an idea. I record the vocal, whatever the vocal is first. And I put that in so I can start sliding the images over the top. And I'm, I was working on sound effects, like whoop for this and that and the other. And he had like the diameters and I did like this whoop sound effect. I'm like, oh man, I'm so freaking loving this right now. Yeah. I need, I need sounds. I need an actual soundtrack. So I went to some of my junk. That I have, I just build, I'll build stuff, throw it in a folder, throw it in a folder. And I had this folder that I built. It was sort of like this, I don't know what you call it, loungy, lazy, uh, whatever, background music. And so I had this one little loop that I'd made and I had that and I keyed it up and did some changes to it. And I'm like, just drop it in, just drop it in. Yep. See how, and and <laughs> it's so perfect. I was like, believe it or not, that's the worst one. Of, of the ones we worked on the together, worst, that is my least favorite. That's my least favorite. Yeah. That's okay. why. So I said, hey, I couldn't make this one. Work. So in the sh- in uh, DKE, the three 10 minutes that I have, there's Magoob in all three. Mm-hmm. And uh, I hope that's not a spoiler or does that matter? I don't know. Anyway, uh, and so that one I couldn't make fit. Tonally, I couldn't make it fit. And I go, hey, man, I, I got a bunch of them in. This one I couldn't make work. And he goes, okay, I'll just post it then. So then he posts it and then a ton of people saw it. And I was like you know, getting compliments and I'm like, that is so awesome. I actually <laughs> thought it was, ah, it's okay. But, uh, but I never done anything like that. So it's really like not exactly my style even, which is partly probably why I was like, mm, with it. So. And what's crazy is I think, cause my, I don't know, like my immediate response is like, Oh, a lot of people need those commercials. Mm, I want to work with everybody. Yeah. We need a commercial. Well, and it, it's almost like, we need chicken burger disco ad agency to show up and like promote all the bootleg toy yeah, industry. Like for Dude, the DK econ, like you're the guy that just makes commercial after commercial. That's what I would like to do next time. So like first time I did it, I did it all my own. Right. Yeah. So I went out there and it's this weird, weird thing. And it's hard to relate to because people don't know who I am or whatever. So it's just like surprise that we did where uh, they would play my stuff. They go, okay, that guy's, got some strange stuff so i started reaching out to a few people saying hey i want to i want to try to do an ad for you and uh, a few people said yes uh, some people didn't respond to me uh, one person in particular responded to me with some of the most and i won't say who it is but uh it will play all three days at dk econ with some of the most hilarious responses ever and yeah. i was just like okay we're doing this i don't care what you say um but what i'd like to do next is i think the next dk econ uh which is July because there's no Comic Con, yeah. right? Uh, which will be virtual. To do as many, and it's going to stress me. I know it is, but to do as many collabs as possible because that's the way forward. I see the way forward is I got to work with more people because I got so much joy out of working with people this time. I just got to do this for everybody. Yeah, like, and, and what I'm honestly hoping is is that I uh, I have to say like, okay, these are going to be for this show and these are going to be for that show because. 
I just have so much fun making them. And really it's like the back and forth, like me and you were having, uh, where it's like, that's, I dig that. Cause I'm just a toy dude who likes weird stuff. And like to have somebody to talk to about it and just vibe and, and riff on stuff. I'm like, that's why I want to do any of this. It's friends to be honest. I mean, as dumb as that sounds, that's it. Yeah. You know? So I think it's a, a cool thing to like, I don't know. I, this industry is going to start growing and I think it's growing exponentially and you are on the forefront of like making commercials. It's like we're oh, starting man. all over again. Yeah. Don't put me out there like that, but I, I think you're right about it growing. So you see some stuff that's happened like the last yeah. couple of years, super seven. I found two, I bootlegging because of super seven, super seven, picking up on the art community. They're putting that out there. Hasbro is biting super seven. I'm going, Hmm, let's make three and three quarter inch figures again. There's a lot of collectors out there going, why would they make this? I can tell you why they're going to make that because there's a huge market for this. The bodies alone I want. Yeah. So I'm going to yeah. bash the crap out of that. Oh, give me that Captain America, please. Thank you. I'm going to fix that. Yeah. I'm going to do yeah. something else. But, you know, they see that and they make a weird Vader, making a convention exclusive Vader that's rainbow colors. Like, uh huh. Yeah. Sure. Sure has, bro. So, as far as I think what, you, what you're saying, I agree with you. It's growing and I see corporate people starting to come in and go like, how can we take that thing that's art and sell it for us commercially? That's how, you know, people get successful and things like that. I just like the, the freaking folk artness of it. Like, you know, yeah. when you go to the street fair with like the, the artists that are there and they make these weird, you know, paintings, like I love that about it. Like yeah. when you go to the con and there's that row, oh, it's so dope. Like, that's the row I want to spend the entire time in. Like, all the other rows are great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That rose, that's the coolest, man. Yeah. You should never see that ever again. That's yeah. what's neat about it. I, what's crazy is I have yet to see um, two bootleg figures that are the same. Oh, yeah, no way. And so, and because they, they aren't mass produced, like, uh, I, I produced some pieces that, like, uh, one of the pieces I produced was an Ikea robot and it was really mm-hmm. just a disassembled robot in the thing. And I think I produced maybe 10 of them and all 10 are gone. So only 10 of those things exist in the world right now. Well, they're not going to be in the box the same either, are they? Yeah. And I will, not- I will never ever produce those again. And I love it. Right. So did you, so question for you. So that yeah. was K2SO, right? Yep. Uh, did you cast that or is that just like you found those at like, like a discount shop? So I didn't cast it, but I, I, this is a good segue into what I like, I'm hoping we could talk about as well. So I am in this mixture where I do cast some characters, but I also am in this idea of like uh, death by toys, where if I yeah. find something that fits, I'm going to do that as well. See, when I see that stuff, I get like mega jealous because I see that and I go like, oh, that's so good. And nobody thinks of it. And you walk past that, that stupid peg at the store a hundred yep. times mm-hmm. and you go like, it's just clever. It's smart. You yeah. Know? And I, I think that that idea, you know, it's, it's, if you go back to classic art, right. That's like ready mates, only ready mates with a smile. Yeah. Like stick, I stick a sticker on it. You know, the, there's several p- obvious plant, right. Same kind of idea, but like, I don't know if he casts his stuff or what, but he's got like a weird version. He always makes sort of a joke. Yeah. Uh, that stuff. And I noticed that about your stuff too, that you had both. You were doing a mixture of both. That's super cool. I never like, want to get stuck. I think that's right. The, yeah. And I, I don't know if you notice this, but there's a weird uh, bottlenecking that happens in bootlegging sometimes. Hmm. It's like, you'll notice that some people, they either take on, I only do bootlegs mm. or I only do the other side. Right. And I feel like you miss out on so many cool ideas if you only do one or the other. Yeah, you're limiting yourself. Yeah. Right? And you're so saying, like, yeah. I think, so I'll sit around with my wife and I'll say like, uh, oh, here's a cool idea. You know, and I'll do like that. I'll be like, oh, I'll see something really good, something you've done, something somebody else has done where they take something and they go like, Check the cool packaging out. Watch this. I'm going to, I'm going to wrinkle this and put a smile on it. And, and I'll see that and I'll start trying to write down all these cool ideas. And then I get discouraged with them because I'm like, I don't know. And then those blisters are a dollar a piece. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I start thinking about like, it's expensive to create that thing because then you start having to source the materials. You're like, okay, how can I, I don't know if you guys have five below out there, but like, mm-hmm. uh, it's like a discount store or Ollie's or something like that. Like, 
okay, how many of these can I buy for like nothing mm-hmm. that I can turn mm-hmm. into something like this? Uh, and so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that story, but uh, yeah, I see it. I just think like, that's so cool. And you're right. Don't limit yourself by the method. Yeah. The, the idea is that, again, you're taking something that never existed that way. I notice there's kind of a distinction between kit bash, casts, sculpts, uh, like you said, like where people are, are taking things and sort of, you know, recreating them or giving them a new spin. Yeah. Like, to me, I see all that as the, they are all the same, maybe different genres within, you know, you know, like music, they always have that, right? This is country folk and this is folk country. You know, yeah, that, that's yeah. basically what we're doing. But I think if all that stuff's good. So, yeah, I think what's, what's interesting is, um, I don't know if you guys have swap meets around where you live. Used to. Yeah. Yeah. We have one. It, it didn't ever stop running during COVID, which is so wow. scary. Yeah. It just kept going. Um, but I like, I'll, I'll just walk through and I, you know, swap meets have changed from when I, I don't, I don't know how old you are. I'm 30. So when I was a kid and I used to go to the swap meets, uh, I would see, like you'd see so many things where it was just, it looked like literal trash was thrown out on the ground. And like, everything's a quarter. Those are the places I love. Yes. Now you're seeing at these swap meets where those are less and less. And then you have people who are collectors that know what they have, but I'm not there. Like, I don't want that. I don't, I don't right. want, no, no, yeah. no. I want someone that found Boba Fett in the trash and is now trying to make a profit. And the arm's missing. Yeah. Or something like that. Right. And it so, can give you an idea. Yeah. And so I, I like I went through and I buy some of the weirdest stuff. Like uh, the latest one I bought was uh, John Smith from Pocahontas. I bought like six of them and I and I had no idea what I was going to do. I remember what that looks like. Yeah. So it's just honestly, it's a generic white colonial man, long blonde <laughs> hair, white skin, like blue eyes. And so I was looking at these figures one day and my wife was like, what are you doing? And I was like, I don't know. I'm going to watch tv and do this and the movie thor came on (laughs) and i was like wouldn't it be so funny if you got a package from wish that sucked which usually it does but what if i designed a bootleg that looked like wish now i know what you're talking about because yeah yeah and so that's where that came from i just was walking around a swap meet and then sitting like with these figures in my hand watching tv and all of a sudden it was like oh my gosh this is thor i'm holding thor (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and so yeah sort of. <laughs> yeah i'm holding thor if you got him from the wish and so it's like it's super fun um doing that stuff but yeah i think that that's in that weird category right so it's not casting but it's right. also not the original figure because i definitely altered it right i just altered it to look stupid right yeah so I, it's it's a weird uh, i like think soup. yeah exact well if you get soup from a bag right if you make yep. soup you're gonna add your own seasoning to it yeah. It, is it, am I going to do the Marvel thing? Am I going to do WandaVision now? Is it that, you know how they had that boat yeah. uh, story in there, the ship of Theseus or whatever? Mm-hmm. It's that idea. You've taken it and changed it. it. As much as people make fun of this, Vanilla Ice did this, right? He said, yeah. well, their song goes like this and my song goes like that. And everybody laughed because it's so obvious that they still laugh. But is it the same song? No, it is not. It is a new song based on the old one. I don't know that he's necessarily wrong. You can argue he sounds like a moron. Yes, he does. Yeah. But he still did something that to this day, any party you put on anywhere, you put on that song, whether it's the Queen and David Bowie version or it's his version, everybody digs. Yep. Right. So he still, they still did something different. And in a way, that's what we're, that's what we're saying. It's like, that's good. You know, that's still good. What I don't like is how, when walls get put up around that or when rules get put up around that they try to stop that com- remixing of everything around. I think it's short-sighted. You're not yeah. seeing what that can become because one little thing becomes, Oh, what's that? That so nine inch nails records an ambient track and puts it on just a record way out there. And somebody comes along and makes old town road. You don't have that hit song without that guy making the ambient song. It's just sort of like some weird thing. Yeah. So, you're losing if you, if he was to say no, don't do that. You lose that. We all lose that. We lose a joint. It. Why are we stopping all those? You know, you see like uh, better be careful. Disney, come get me. But <laughs> you, you, you see, people have taken 
Ron English or people like that have taken the icon of, of Mickey Mouse, warp it, rearrange it, and give it back to you. That's not for everybody. But some people are going to see that and go like, oh, I love it. I want that. I want my Mickey Mouse to look like that or whatever character, you know? Yeah. And saying, no, 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 we can't do that because there's rules. Well, I own this now. I'll give you a, here's a really weird one that just happened. So I have this sketch that I did. And in the sketch, there's a picture uh, of toxic slime. Mm -hmm. Okay. What I did was I found an advert for, it was uh, pills. And I wiped out what they had and I put in what I wanted. So this person posted this on Instagram. So I made a joke. I saw it and I went, hey, whoa, did you pay my NFT for that? Now I'm totally kidding, right? They pulled it down like that. I went, ah, put it back up. Yeah. I'm cool. You run that like crazy. You send that to everybody because my junk's in there. It's this CBD in there. Yeah. This yeah. is all this crap in there. And I stole it. It's just an advertisement for like weightlifting pills. Yeah. So I just stole it, rearranged it. Then you showed it to your friends. Hey, look at this. Isn't this funny? You stole it from a thing that you saw. Just keep going. Yeah. It grows, yeah. you know, and that's awesome. Like where it comes, where it turns into, that's the thing that nobody, like, if you stop it, you don't see where it goes next. But if you let yeah. it go, it may turn into nothing or it may turn into, you know, like they have those memes or whatever. It becomes part of culture and you go like i had this teeny tiny little hand in that i don't know you could walk around the rest of your life with that one little moment and go like am i rich no did i do something neat yeah can they put that in my epitaph sure can honestly that's what i think i'm always just worried about it this is sort of like a weird like leaving something mm -hmm. for other people to enjoy that's it i don't really care if it's stolen or ripped or remixed or whatever that's just so cool to see things become things and that's part yeah. of what like toy bootlegging when i found it i went where have i been why have i not been into this this is the dopest thing i've ever seen i'm i'm now obsessed and then you watch master casters and uh suck lord's talking about since like oh i've been doing this since like 93 are you like how would you right. do that since 93 no one knows about it no one like instagram didn't ex how did you get it out yeah well we're all losers i have this figured out so long ago and you're like what it, you know it's, it's one of these things too where folks start they don't realize that a lot of folks can have the same idea yeah and, and just they be independent of each other um i'm trying to think of one uh something simple but you know you have an idea to take this head and put it on this body yeah somebody else can have that same idea because they fall in the exact right place um so like my chicken burger disco figure that i currently have uses a burger king body I think it's a Happy Meal toy, right? Mm -hmm. The reason why it uses that body, there's two reasons. One is, is I was on eBay late at night just shopping around for, for bodies, right? And the other one is, is the Frankenstein's monster. Mm. So a Frankenstein's monster is the culmination of a bunch of dead parts to make something new. So the idea that your icon is based on remix just struck me as like, that has to be what I use. You know, so I'm looking through... Uh, you know, do I use Vader? Do I use this? What do I use? And then the monster came up and I went, that is the ethos of toy bootlegging. If I make my character's body based on that, I'm tied to it. And I just thought like, I, there's no other way to do this. This is exactly how I have to do it. Everyone has used that body. Now I know that, but I didn't know that at the time. Everyone has used that body. Good. Keep using it. Everyone use it because what we're saying by doing that is remix, change, yeah. Yeah. create something new. And, you know, Frankenstein's monster didn't want anything but peace. Right. So that's what we're, that's what we're about. That's dope. So, OK, so you you collect. I see all those toys behind you. You mm -hmm. create because you've created your own rad figure about your own weird life, which I love. <laughs> uh, so what. With all that, are you? Do you do conventions like outside of the commercials? Are you a part of DKE? Do you sell in stores? What's that look like? So okay, so I've only sold anything once. Uh, that was in February. That was the first time I ever tried to sell anything. I was part of a toy convention, Assembly Required. Oh, that uh, was yeah. I was helping them out with some various again visual stuff, mm -hmm. video stuff that I can do for them or whatever. Um, <clears throat> all based on the same idea, which is like how I want to I want to collab with people and. And, and it's cool because you make friends that way, right? Yeah. 
So they were like, dude, to be in part of this though, you need to make something. And I'm like, man, I only make for like this little thing so I could show it on screen and it sucks. Yeah. And, and they're like, no, 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 really do it. So I bit off way more than I could chew. But we all do that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and and, and I, I worked really, really like with a lot of nerves, produced a, I think it was a run of about 20 chicken burger discos. And then I have some like some minion type characters or, or evil, whatever. So called Newman's. Um, and so I created those characters and then uh, sold those as well. So I sold like a, a more than I ever expected to sell. Let me put it that way. The goal for me uh, is right now I'm my friends, the fantastic plastics. I'm trying to make three and three quarter inch figures so I could replicate them as best as I can for molds and then uh, produce those for them and for their fans. So their fans can buy some of them. Mm -hmm. And in November, I'm going to do my first exclusive with DKE right now. That's the only place I'm looking to, to, to do stuff um, with toy stuff right now, just cause I just start, I mean, I really don't know anything about it. Yeah. The, the DKE guys, Janky, Ian are all super nice to me. And they're like, I never intended to even put out toys at all. Right. That was never it. I was just trying to make the weird videos and I just love this stuff. And it was the push from MJC from assembly required going like, you need to make some toys. And then, the guys at DKE going like, do you want to do one for us? I'm like, are you serious? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh, okay. I'll do that. And then they gave me right. a long enough timeline to be prepared, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I, I said to Janky, I said, I never expected to do this. And he goes, dude, it was inevitable. I can tell it's inevitable. I'm like, well, I wasn't planning on it. But <laughs> so November, right? That's this November coming up. Yeah. It's the yep. decon, which right. should be in person. So are you going to be there? going to try so i don't know yet uh but i'm going to try that is what i'm wanting to do yeah so. so i'll be producing i haven't decided what i'm going to produce yet um luckily we still have time uh, i yeah, do have yeah. one idea that i'm uh hoping for but it all depends on how that molding and all that stuff goes and then um uh there's another show that's happening the way that dub describes it i have no idea what he's talking about but I keep, mm -hmm. I keep saying, yes, I'll do it. Sure. And so it's like, do you remember the Back to the Future theme show? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we did that one. And then like there's uh, there's one, it's called like the Roaring Twenties or something, another theme show coming up nice. around the same or at the same place. So it's two separate designs that we would have to make. Gotcha. So I'm, I'm super excited about doing that. And I already have an idea for that one. And, um, but yeah, so I'm super excited that, decons and i'm glad that you're going to be there so do you already yeah. have like the figure in your head what you're going to do so i'm going to do an exclusive version of chicken burger disco yes that's the that's the, that's the first thing i'm going to do although i have <laughs> i have several other like ideas i don't know what I, I i might wind up doing something like this and he can tell me no which is yeah. doing the exclusive and then going here's five of this weird thing here's five of this weird thing just put them in the store and then let anybody take whatever they want. You know what I mean? Cause uh, I have a couple molds of, of some things and I'm trying to shrink some stuff right now mm -hmm. to get down to a, a size that I kind of like, I like the oversized head, but shrink it a little bit more uh, and do a couple other variant things. So we'll see. I think I'm going to do July. They have, they're going to do DKE uh, virtually because there's no mm -hmm. comic con. Right. So I'm going to do that one again with video. Then uh, the November show, that's where I'm going to have the exclusive. I think, uh, that's the plan anyway. Hopefully I can get it done and everything. Uh, and then, yeah, if I can make it there, that would also be a dream come true. Do you um, currently still have a couple uh, CBDs? I can make them. I actually have one carded floating around. I'm trying to remember. Oh, I have it on the shelf. I just put it up. You do have one fully done? Yeah. 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 I mean, I'll send you a message. I'll take it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I for sure want just, one. On just my... send me your address. I'll send it to you. Are so, you kidding me? Yeah. No, just send me your address. I'll send it to you. Yeah, I don't need money for it at this point. So, oh the, my gosh, don't do that. Like, I'll uh, I'll send that and a couple other things that I've got for you. One thing I never explained, and I probably should, is all the stuff I'm making, sort of all operates within uh, this my friend's fantastic plastics and everything. So, like my character, Chicken Burger Disco, right? Yeah. But uh, the evil villain and all these things are actually based on songs. So uh, we have an evil villain called Doctor Disintegration. Well, we have a song called Disintegration. So the idea for the character came from the song or the evil, his evil minions are the Newmans. That's a song we have called yeah. Newman. 
And so like everything is sort of based in that. So we need to actually write some more songs because I'm running out of material. But uh, but the I, all those things are kind of all mixed together. So when I send you some stuff, you'll be like, okay, I'm not sure I understand all of this. But some of my videos will help inform. Uh, and then, you know, that kind of stuff. So. That's rad. I'm excited. So, okay. So we are coming towards the end of the podcast. I, I like to give the artist the time at the end to say like, where do we find you? What are you interested in working with artists with? Uh, where you're headed next? If you've got some toys coming up that we can get our hands on, all those things. So sure, time sure. is all yours. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, Instagram. That's the best place to find okay. me. Uh, uh, the other thing I do is, uh, like I mentioned, my friends have a Twitch show. Uh, it's called uh, The Plastic Show or The Fantastic Plastics. If you, you, you look for that on Twitch, you'll find them. My stuff plays every show that they do but see it's easy for me they have to perform live i just make stuff and then send it to them and show it. <laughs> so it's easy for me uh but uh yeah so like new stuff's constantly getting thrown in there and then i kind of take some of the gems and keep them for myself for later maybe um i uh next obviously this weekend dk econ so there's gonna have stuff going there um the next toys i'm gonna do is I, i'm trying to have my first exclusive or my first real thing first real drop should be in november great i'll probably i'll probably put out small little runs from an etsy store because what i'm doing is i'm testing my skills mm -hmm. can i get something up to this level can i get the damn card back right like that's something i'm really working hard to try to because i suck at it uh but it's <laughs> there's some stuff in my house that's like got spray adhesive all over it yep I, I can't tell you how many things I've glued to the things they shouldn't be glued to. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I'm trying to get that right. And I'm listening to some folks about ideas for that. So I'll probably do some things and I'll, I'll say about those on Instagram. As far as working with other artists, I would like to work with other artists. It basically goes like DM me if you're interested in doing something. Uh, let's just start talking about it. Because I don't know. You know, I, I don't have an idea until somebody starts talking to me and then things will start rattling, you know, especially like, it's like anything. If people give you the analogy I use a lot of times, if you give me 10 crayons or if you give me a sheet of paper, I'm going to use my 10 crayon. But if somebody else comes in, they're bringing in their 10 colors. They might be two of the same. They might both say brown. They're different, you know? Yeah. And you're going to get a different, the picture's going to look so much different. And so when people reach out to me, that's where all the, the stuff starts to work. Some of it's chemistry. Some of it's just ideas batting back and forth. Some of it's if, if you like it. He just starts to grow. I uh, I did some stuff with Yo-Yo Dying Toy Division. He sent me his, some of his toys. We did a trade. Mm. So uh, he sent me some of his stuff, and the bubble fell off, fell off. And it's a damn good thing it did because the blister falls off, and I'm like, <laughs> I got it. And then, like, I'm out walking the dog. I'm just typing stuff into my phone. Like, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. I come back in, started working, spent, like, a couple days on it, and then I sent it over to him went, check it out. And he's like, dude. I'm like, it's a good thing that the blister fell off because he was bummed the blister fell off. You know, I'm like, I can yeah. fix that. That's not a problem. It's that it fell out, gave me everything that we needed to make something cool together. You know, I love that. And so, yeah, so I'm open to work with anybody. I think the next thing is just me getting better at the craft. I stink at it. I'm trying, I'm all the time trying to like uh, improve on it, learn paint techniques, watching shows on casting or clips that people have or, uh, Barbarian Rage, I think it's still up, but he had like a, a blog mm -hmm. where he would go through different techniques for making a two-part mold and things like that. So I was like, like studying it going, okay. Yeah. And, and, and things like that. So have you seen uh, the craftsman? Yes. That dude's yeah. awesome. So I don't know anything about him. I just know that it's the puppet and then you just see his hands the whole time. Mm -hmm. He's where I learned everything I do, which is great, much, by the way. I just, whatever I do know, it's from that guy. He's so good. Plus that, that whole cadence and everything is hilarious. Yeah. Like he's just, oh, so good. It, it's super good. And yeah. Oh, so he's, I think the other podcast I was listening to uh, that you had uh, posted up, you were talking about this. It, it, like, I, I don't know how I'm ever going to get that good, but right now I've watched his video on shrink molds. Yeah. So basically you put mineral spirits in. So I have a couple heads. I want to shrink. I've watched his thing on shrink molds like five times because I keep going like, what am I missing? Cause I haven't done it yet. Got all the parts sitting there and I'm nervous. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, plus it's gotta be warm enough for me to get it rolling. But, uh, I'm like, I'm nervous to do it. Cause I don't want to just waste a bunch of materials. This is expensive. Yeah. I think that's the tough part. Right. So we, we've gotten, I've gotten to a point where it's like, because of trial and error, 
Mm-hmm. I just, I keep uh, wasting materials and it's like, I'm experimenting with different materials. I've never done colored resin because I haven't, I don't want to waste that much money. Like, right. and so I, yeah, I think that's tough to just go Oops. through all those. <laughs> so I was using, I was using crap resin. Uh, I didn't have, you know, I'm the same way. I'm experimenting with different stuff. And then somebody said, dude, use smooth on and use this version. Yep. And so I was like, well, actually I don't want fast cure because it takes me a little while to get my pressure pot set up. So I'll get a little bit longer curing, mm-hmm. uh, which works great. And I'm like, okay, cool. That's going to be my resin for now. I was just talking to my wife about this yesterday. I was saying, I need to make sure I learn the supplies before I go changing supplies again. But when I did my first ones, I was used to using some crappy stuff that I found at like a hobby store. And so I could throw in mica powder to, to, to make the resin have a different tint, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, I, it needed a ton. To get a, a vibrant color, I needed a ton. So I put that in smooth on, mm-hmm. doesn't work. Smooth on starts to like leak and seep and do all this weird stuff. I'm like, what the hell did I do wrong? Oh, it's the mica powder. Okay, just run one right, straight, make it white. Okay, they're perfect. Okay, so I got them. My mix is right. What am I doing wrong? Somebody goes, tell me, they have particular dyes for that. Oh, and I see Craftsman do that exact exact same thing. And I'm like, I finally watched his video. I didn't know. Yeah. And I think what's tough is like, uh, if you talk, there's a, a toy artist named Vomiting Droids. I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. Just does incredible. I have so many of his Ewoks because I'm just so addicted to them. Um, but he will tell you if you ever reach out that different res- resins, so 65D versus any other like 300 or whatever they're called, uh, right. will react differently to the colors that Smooth On has. So 65D, it's like super vibrant colors. But if Ooh, you okay. put them in other ones, it's like pastel. Because it's mixing with the white. Yeah. And so and if you it, go over that percent, you know, yep. which I'm not going to measure it, but, you know, just do a little dab, right? Yeah. If you go over that, it's going to ruin your mix. And then you yeah. Gotta- so it's this it's this bummer of a process where I think we're all in as bootleg people um, that we're just learning and we're all learning quickly. And so I love just whenever someone's like, hey, I'm struggling designing my card back great. Let's design the card back. Let's slam them together. I'll show you how to put it together and cut it. Like it's right. like those things are, are, are so much fun. And so, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, that's why I'm so glad that you're willing to work with other people for commercials and all kinds of stuff. Oh yeah, man. Well, that tip alone, the 65 D I'm like, okay, now I'm going to have to go get some 65 D heck. Yeah. I'm almost right. I'm using 310 right now. I'm almost out of yeah. that. So I'm like, I need to, uh, my wife got me a bunch of stuff to it. Uh, I used, I got pretty good results with it, but yeah. it takes so long to cure. It was like some uh, crystal looking stuff. So it's clear, mm-hmm. but it just takes like a day plus to cure, which I'm so impatient. Yeah. Four I hours say, is about my max. Yeah. So three, I use, uh, man. Okay. Now, now we're going to test my knowledge of remembering. I think it's 327. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't use any dye with it when I'm doing it, but I needed, when I was making my figure uh, JBC3PO or whatever it was mm-hmm. called, um, I needed enough time to inject mold it. And I was right. running short of time with all the other short cure. Um, and dollar slice sent over a thing of like, no, 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 stop using that one. Like use 327 or whatever. And it's like a four to six hour cure, if I remember right, but it comes out beautifully. So it's like it's it's worth it if you're willing to right. pay the price for time. Yeah. It, I'll sacrifice four or five hours. It's when it's like 48 hours cure time you're like oh that's too yeah long. that's some jewelry type yeah. curing you know like and and, and i i get so impatient i'm gonna open them yeah it's just what's gonna happen you know and then I mean? you like stretch it and you're like oh shit i'm no <laughs> right. yeah yeah so yeah. i don't know i that's would a good say tip too yeah and i think what's like there's so many toy people out there that are willing to help mm-hmm. um I know there's a guy named Crumbs Blunt who's doing round round table discussions with people, with toy artists. I've seen some of those, yeah. Yeah, and so um, he's always willing to bring people in for that. And then you have uh, Obi-Wan Toy Division on, uh, what is that app? Discord. Uh, They're in something where there's a bunch of toy artists talking about all the stuff they do and Oh, right on. Yeah, so there's there's always people everywhere that are making little pods of groups. Uh, I've left a couple groups. I've joined a couple groups. Mm. I don't know exactly what I'm looking for, uh, but I I I always am looking. I know for a fact for a community that's willing to like 
ask the questions like, oh, how do I do this better? Right. Yeah. And so, hey, thank you so much for giving me your time for this interview. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me.